Okay. It's not too loud because uh, there's some remodeling going up on one of the upstairs apartments. So. This would be a tough one because there's some uh, death claws in this area. I don't like the idea of fighting death claws. I never did, anyway. Glad this water's not irradiated because it sucks. Oops, hope it did. I don't understand how this water's not irradiated. And did Hooper Dam purify it somehow? Sneak at a hundred is. I thought so.
Pompeii. Wait. Ah. What is? Why do you say Thursday? The hell does that mean? Okay. What do you say, dude? I'm still thinking what, what game to play after this. Mark Party wants to do a Fallout 4, but that take forever, so maybe I'll do some shorter games. Oh my god, no. I did not pay attention to that shit. Sorry, Arcade. Time to fuck these dudes up with a mini nuke. This is gonna do some major damage, I bet, too. Just look at that on the radar. There are tons of death claws out there. Because the mommy's out there, too, and I think there's an alpha male among them, I think. Or is it just a mother and a bunch of little kids and a couple of teens? Let's see, anyway. Uh, yeah, look at that, man. My lord. Okay. There is an alpha male. This is the whole den, basically. That was a terrible shot. Let's do it like this. Two, four, up. Uh, 
here's the mm, there it is. Why is, it, why is it doing that? The USC's fine. Oh wait, no, it's because it's not daytime. That's why. these finders being glitchy today. Is there only a certain range you can go? I don't remember that being the case. Ulysses Finder thing, hold on. Something's wrong with my gun.
let's see. Let's see if this fixes it. Hold up. Hell, dude, god damn it. There, oops. Oh, hey. The 
these prospectors made it big before dying. There, get the remnant of his power. Sure, armor. just don't treat me like a pack Brahmin, okay? You can wear that for undisclosed reasons. Where to, partner? What's up? What's up? Let's see. Ooh, got something good for me? Is it a dress? Making me carry the heavy stuff, aren't you? Should have brought something to read. Aw, that chip of yours? I wouldn't wager it on blackjack. Unless the dealer has a five or six showing. Nice! What's up?
Sure, just don't treat me like a pack Brahmin, okay? Roller sweet. Casino floor. Wonder I am gonna check something. Where to, partner? I turned in the platinum chip to house last time, but I don't know if that makes it nah it can't be. Let's see. I take it you've come to... Trips to the basement are rare. Yes, of course. The next step is to... One of the following... Good luck planting a surveillance...
Oh, whoops, I've been skipping all that. Indeed, it was, and still is. Would Kimball and Oliver have traded the lives of hundreds of soldiers for absolute control of Hoover Dam? Oh, yes. They weren't afraid of me. They were afraid of Caesar, that attacking me would leave them vulnerable to a legion offensive. And so they negotiated, not out of the kindness of their hearts, as they try to make it seem, because the calculus of power left no other choice. NCR forces were permitted to occupy Hoover Dam and establish a military base at McCarran Airport. Well, it used to be one. They recognized my sovereignty over the Vegas Strip and agreed to supply electricity and water once their engineers repaired the dam. Written into the treaty were provisions that the NCR do nothing to prevent its soldiers and civilians from visiting the Strip. That's how I harness the NCR to my endeavor. Their occupation has been the engine of my growing economy. The salient issue is that they will go to war with me, if given the chance. There's just one reason why the NCR hasn't contrived some outrage to justify invading the Strip. Caesar's Legion. The final battle between those two armies is fast approaching. I can't afford to let either side win on their terms. What else did you want to discuss? New Vegas is more than a city. It's the remedy to mankind's derailment. The city's economy is a blast furnace in which can be forged the steel of a new rail line running straight to a new horizon. What is the NCO? A society of people desperate to experience comfort, ease, luxury. With all that money pouring in, give me 20 years and I'll reignite the high technology development sectors. 50 years and I'll have people in orbit. 100 years and my colony ships will be heading for the stars to search for planets unpolluted by the wrath and folly of a bygone generation. I prefer the term autocrat. I would rule as a chief executive. I would not answer to a board of directors or any other entity. Nothing to impede progress. If you want to see the fate of democracies, look out the windows. My judgment. I have no interest in abusing others, just as I have no interest in legislating or otherwise dictating what people do in their private time. Nor have I any interest in being worshipped as some kind of machine god messiah. But autocracy? Firm control in the hands of a technological and economic visionary? Yes, that Vegas shall have. What else? What of it? I enjoy them. There's something about a little diorama set inside a glass dome that I find pleasing. If you run across any out in the wastes, turn them in to Jane. She'll compensate you. What else did you want to discuss? Yeah, we know that. It was a place of splendor. As magnificent as today's strip may seem, it's but a shadow of the neon paradise that was Las Vegas. I grew up not far from here, and though I traveled the old world extensively, I never found another place like it. By 2065, I deemed it a mathematical certainty that an atomic war would devastate the Earth within 15 years. Every projection I ran confirmed it. I knew I couldn't save the world, nor did I care to, but I could save Vegas, and in the process, perhaps save mankind. I set to work immediately. I thought I had plenty of time to prepare. As it turned out, I was 20 hours short. On the day of the Great War, 77 atomic warheads targeted Las Vegas and its surrounding areas. My networked mainframes were able to predict and force transmit disarm code subsets to 59 warheads, neutralizing them before impact. Laser cannons mounted on the roof of the Lucky 38 destroyed another nine warheads. The rest got through, 
though none hit the city itself. A suboptimal performance, admittedly. If only the Platinum Chip had arrived a day sooner. The Platinum Chip was printed in Sunnyvale, California. It was to have been delivered by courier the following afternoon. The chip contained vital software upgrades, but not just for my Securitrons. Every aspect of the missile defense grid would have been upgraded too. Given that I had to make do with buggy software, the outcome could have been worse. Software glitches set off a cascade of system crashes. I had to take the Lucky 38's reactor offline, lest it melt down. For nearly five years, I battled power outages and more system crashes until I finally managed to reboot my data core with an older version of the OS. I spent the next few decades in a veritable coma, but I survived, obviously. And Where'd Victor go? You're always welcome in the staff. There he is. <laughs> well, howdy, partner. All right, well, so I was able to turn in the 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 chip. Yeah, okay. I was able to turn in the chip without the rest of the factions getting all pissy at me. Sir, or Those are still one of the guns I need to get because it's a pretty good gun.
this is good. Looking to join this caravan, huh? Look to me like you can handle yourself. Earning my keep, Jed hired me on as a caravan guard for this expedition of his. The work suits me. I've tried staying put in one place, but it never works out. Grew up in New Reno, and I couldn't put that snake pit behind me fast enough. Then I wound up wasting the prime of my life playing sheriff in Caliente. Little town north on the 93. Talk about a pain in the ass. You ask me, best to keep moving. At least the scenery changes. Imagine New Vegas if there was no Mr. House type fella keeping the peace. Then give everybody a gun and a jet addiction. Towns run by a bunch of crime families. No law to speak of. Make trouble and you wind up buried in Golgotha outside town. The scuzz factor's off the charts. Non-stop whoring and drugs. Couldn't walk down the street without getting asked to star in a porn movie. So I got my ass out of there while I still owned it. Guess I figured the answer to every problem was rule of law. Naive, huh? Place lived up to its name, that's for sure. When you got fresh water and a trickle of geothermic power, always be some gang of assholes wants to kill you for it. Spent more years and took more bullets than I care to admit protecting that hellhole from dangers within and without. If it wasn't the 80s or the White Legs raiding, it was someone from town drunk off his ass trying to win an argument with a shotgun. Got tired of shooting the folks I was supposed to protect. So, now I do this. What's the difference? Raiders is raiders. Bunch of them swept into town and dragged off two working girls. Deputies and me gave pursuit straight into 80s territory. By the time we caught up with the girls, there wasn't much left of them. So we turned for home. Made it back to Caliente without further losses, but we was watched the whole way. Never seen so few people cover so much land. Goddamn creepy. If the 80s had wanted to kill us, we would have been dead. Guess they figured we weren't worth the trouble. Used to be they raided northeast of Caliente time to time. But then the Desert Rangers fell apart ten years ago, absorbed into the NCR. Soon enough, the white legs were swarming all over that stretch of I-15. Folks learned not to head north if they wanted to keep their scalps. Eventually, the white legs destroyed the bridges across the Virgin River over in Arizona. End of discussion. Catch you another time, then. So I hear the honcho of one of them strip families up and disappeared. Poof. Yep, they'll find his body someday. You looking for trouble, bud? I got plenty to spare. So watch your ass around me.
Hey, 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 fuck you! I didn't say nothing about using Psycho! God damn it! I didn't say nothing about using Psycho. But, uh, just talking hypno-theoretically here, got any suggestion? Fixer? Never said I wanted to kick the habit. Guess I can use it when I run out of the good stuff. That much for a dose? Fucking robbery! All right, here's your money. All right, all right. Ten hits will last me a good while. Never done that. And this. Just as a warning, like Yeah, what's it this time? Looking to join this cap. Howdy, friend. Heard my little broadcast, did you? Yeah. You look the type. Hang on. Ain't you the one that wiped out the Crimson Caravan's Vegas branch not too long ago? Ought to thank you for that. Knocking the Clafferty out of the running gives Happy Trails a market to expand into. The job is simple. Help us get this caravan in design and find new Canaan. The pay is 25 caps per day. Half up front, half on return. You'll get a bonus if we make it in design. Plus another bonus if we reach New Canaan. Oh, uh, one more thing. Don't mention the name Joshua Graham to anyone. Anyone. Just don't. It makes the New Canaanites powerful uncomfortable. And it scares the britches off the tribals. Don't talk about the burn man either while you're at it. Trust me on this one. It's for your own good. We're a smaller company out of Sacktown, up in the northern part of the MCR. We run some business through New Reno. They're on the little loop. Had a nice run to Salt Lake City too, but uh, then we lost contact with New Canaan, and that went all to hell. You ain't wrong. Losing the Salt Lake City run really stung us. If we can't re-establish contact with this run, we'll be in real trouble. Without New Canaan's mission in Zion, the only ways to Salt Lake City are down the old I-80, or up through Ogden. The highway is too risky. NCR's Rangers are so busy here in the Mojave, they don't have the manpower to keep the Raiders off. Ogden's just too far. We'd lose more in travel expenses than we'd ever earn. Don't know much about the place, but I can tell you about the people. The new Canaanites were some kind of religious group from before the war. They control the old city of Ogden, ways north of Zion, and they got themselves a nice defensible mission in the canyon itself. Or they did. They trade a fair bit with the tribes in Zion. Well, the ones that don't try to kill them anyways. I ain't a praying man myself. They paid for their goods and dealt square with us. That's all I ever cared about. But don't think that just because they're religious, that they're pacifists. They take care of their own, and they're damn fine marksmen, too. Nope. Hence this caravan. If we don't make contact with the new Canaanites, happy trails might as well just shrivel up and die.
Well, I ain't never been inside myself. Did some trading with the new Canaanites from their mission there, but that was all on the outskirts. All the old ways in and out were destroyed after the war, but we got ourselves the location of a pass the new Canaanites use. That's our way in. That's why I wanted someone with a pit boy on the caravan. The map will be helpful for checking the topography, keeping us on the trail. <laughs> Well, it ain't good, I'll tell you that. It's not like the Mojave or the NCR. Hell, even Arizona under Caesar is safer. You got raiders all over the damn place. Tribes of degenerates that'll eat you as soon as look at you. Regional warlords, the works. Not too many decent places to stop and trade. New Canaan's one of the only ones left I know about. They're about what you'd expect. Crazy. Jacked up on Kim's, violent as hell, and not too bright. The worst of the 80s. But we won't be passing through their turf on this run. That's right. The folks that lived in Zion before the war, they didn't just get a little savage. They're downright feral. Most of them don't even speak English anymore. You've got to get yourself a new Canaanite translator to talk to them. The ones you really gotta watch out for are the White Legs from the Great Salt Lake. They'll attack just about anyone that ain't one of theirs. Dangerous enough we won't be going near them if we can help it. I got no desire for my head to decorate some little gas station for its walls, thanks. Yeah, reckon you will. Carrying 75 pounds or less. Shit. God damn it. You looking for trouble? You want to know what I do, bud? I'm one of a kind. I've been places, see? And when it's time to kill shit up, hell yeah! Something or someone make the mistake of crossing Ricky? I'll fucking dead-eye him, her, or it. In fact, yeah, in fact, that's my... Uh, how you think? I shoot things in the eye. Why, uh, once I got jumped by three death jaws. Except, but I didn't panic. Because, because I never panic. What I did was become a storm of death. No, no, you heard me right. Death jaws. They're like death claws, but bigger teeth. Or there was the time one of them Steel Brotherhood assholes made the mistake of messing with me. Last mistake he ever made. What's it sound like I'm saying? If I was saying what you said I was saying, then yeah. I was walking along, minding my own, and up pops one of them Brotherhoods. So I hand it over, just to make him think I'm scared. Before he knows what hit him, I draw my 11 millimeter machine gun and bam, bam, right through the eye slit in his helmet. Then I guess this dumb fucker's armor must have been. All I know is he died up real dead when I killed him. Well, I grew up near Dayglo out west, so yeah. Nice job, Eagle Eye. Of course I got a pit boy and a vault suit. Where the fuck you think? Oh, <laughs> you've been to Vault 2 too, huh? I may have been exaggerating a little. Truth is, I got this suit and the pit boy off a dead prospector who came out from Zion. Guy was dead when I found him, okay? Had a ton of shit on him. That's how I know there's good loot in Zion, si Sorry. The shit I do with it is so far over your head, be wasting my time to put it in words you could understand. Basically, it makes me badass. More badass, I mean. It's totally mind-blowing shit. It ain't just some bracelet. 
Jed says it's got maps and shit like that. So that's how I'm gonna guide this caravan where it needs to go. Huh? Of course I noticed. First thing I noticed about you. Me? I'm so used to wearing mine, it's just normal. Don't think you're someone special just because you've got one. Bullshit! Ain't nothing wrong with my pit boy. I, I mean, pit boy! Look, this is a sweet gig for me. Don't go fucking it up. What are you after anyway? I travel light on purpose, okay? But fine, I'll tell Jet I'm carrying less so you can carry more. God damn it! But all right, all right. That'll last. You looking for trouble, bud? Guess I I travel light on purpose, okay? But if the price is right, I'll tell Jed I'm carrying less. You looking for trouble? There so is, or was a nine millimeter. Said I was good at killing shit up. Right, so we'll carry some shit yeah, on what's you. it this time? Let me head back to the strip. <laughs> shit. See away for sure.
Oops. Might as well put away some of the weapons I'm not going to use. Uh. I wonder where the bounty hunter does trick is. <laughs> Lightweight leather armor is too much if I want to carry all these weapons because I'll need some variety. Actually, no. What I can do, actually.
So that what I need is actually put this battery adjuster right over here. What's up? Oh, I thought my charm could win you over. Can't travel alone. Yeah, what's it this time? Something on your mind? Are you here to join me a while longer? Hang on. Are you now? You know, we ain't coming back this way for a good long while now, right? And you know about the weight limit. I don't want no whining about old Mr. Masters. I left my one-of-a-kind plasma cannon back at base. Can we go back for it? You sure you're ready now? You ain't never been to Zion, have you? We'll be passing through a whole mess of narrow slot canyons and high rough passes. A big pack will get you wedged in like a super mutant crawling through a storm drain. And too much weight will kill you in the thin air. You sure about that this time? Well, all right then. Let's get moving. We got a long road ahead of us. Finally starting one of the DLCs. I forgot about that weight limit. The paths <laughs> we're following are slow going, so you might as well keep your ears open. And listen to what old Jed has to say. A few decades back, folks in the NCR started to hear about a community in northern Utah called New Canaan. Didn't know much about them, except that they were religious folks, sent out missionaries to talk to the tribes. We've seen our share of cults, but the New Canaanites, they were honest traders. Good fighters, too. Raiders wouldn't tangle with them. But then, the Legion appeared in Arizona. I reckon you know all about them. Turns out Caesar's first war chief, the Malpace Legate, was a new Canaanite, Joshua Graham. Legend goes that Graham was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole damn Legion. The new Canaanites wouldn't talk about him. They were ashamed. Guess I can't blame them. Well, at Hoover Dam, the Malpace Legate finally met his match. Hanlon and Oliver kicked his new Canaanite butt right back over the river. Caesar had to make an example for the others to show them that even at the highest level, failure wouldn't be tolerated. He had Graham covered in pitch, lit on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. People say he didn't even scream on the way down. Not long after, some of the slaves and tribals started to talk. Said Graham wasn't dead. Shouldn't have been any surprise. All this talk bothered Caesar. So he forbade anyone from speaking his name. Wanted to erase Joshua Graham from history. He got his wish. Joshua Graham disappeared. And in his place came legends of the burned man walking the wastes. Probably just a tribal ghost story. But New Canaan's been silent for a long time. Maybe it's a coincidence. 
Maybe the mal tastes like it. He is dead. Or maybe Joshua Graham did crawl out of that canyon and finally found his way back home. All right, people. Been a long couple of weeks, but here we are. Zion. I know your feet hurt. I know you're tired. But I need everyone's mind on the trail ahead. Ain't the trail ahead worries me, Jed. Those descents we made through that slot canyon back up there. Ain't no way we're getting back out the way we come. And then what? God damn it, Stella heard you the first time. And the 15th, too. The new Canaanites will know a way. And if they don't, we've got the maps on our friend's pit boy over there. Enough lollygagging. Get moving. And keep an eye out for tribals. Sorry to bother you with reality, old Jed. Who cares if we can't get back out the way we come? It's not a problem. Fuck off, I'm busy. Leave me be, busy. Shh. Hold on now. God damn it, ambush! Cover people! Watch yourselves! You want some assholes? You just pissed off the wrong guy. And that means Rick. Shut the hell up, Fuck Ricky. Off. I'm busy. Might as well be waving at him. Holy shit. Stay low. Idiot. <laughs> Thought he was gonna die. Fucking dummy. Might as well grab his jumpsuit. Poor Jed.
dark future do? That's the main weapon thing. Okay, I see. don't leave survivors often you're some kind of lucky let me tell you you came from outside didn't you from the civilized lands wow Joshua will want to hear about this I mean the lands beyond the valley the place where the cities never fell where people don't live in tribes and forage just to survive Joshua keeps saying it isn't paradise out there but how can it not be, compared to this? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Joshua will want to know about you. Please, go to our camp on the Eastern Virgin. Tell him how you came to be here. Good sists, maybe while you're there, you can tell me about where you came from, yeah? can I tell you? Mostly it's the mountain bighorners. Whole herd of them up on the cliffs there. Usually they're not too aggressive, but lately... Whew, my guess is one of the calves got lost somewhere along the way. Bighorners are communal. One missing calf, and the whole herd gets ornery. If that calf doesn't turn up soon, they might very well come down into the valley and attack the camp. Yeah? Hey, thanks. Most of the hunters don't listen when I tell them the problem. Just one thing. Try not to kill any bighorners if you can, yeah? You'll drive the herd off and we'll have to range farther on our hunts. Hmm. You might try luring the baby out with some banana yucca. These bighorners go crazy for the stuff. That's great. I'll help any way I can. Up close and personal? Well, as long as they don't have guns. Keeping my distance sounds more my speed anyways. Sure. You are going to leave me some chalk marks to follow though, right? Fine by me. Get too far back and it's easy to lose your partner in this maze. Now you're thinking like a hunter. I like this plan. You're starting to sound like the old Joshua. Now you're thinking like a hunter. I like this plan. Sure. Okay. I'll wait behind. Not like I'm not used to that. Right behind you. What can I tell you? White legs. A nasty bunch. They've been raiding deeper into Zion ever since New Canaan was wiped out. That's what Joshua said. White legs came down from Great Salt Lake in force. Fell on New Canaan before they could mount a defense. Joshua found some of the survivors led by a man named Daniel. Most of them have fled the valley. But Daniel stayed on with the Sorrows tribe. He and Joshua have been arguing over whether to stand and fight the White Legs, or take the Sorrows and the Dead Horses out of the valley. That's the weird part. Normally, the White Legs keep to the Great Salt Lake. I don't know what brought them down this far south. Our advanced scouts leave chalk signs to mark places rich with game. I'm not a full scout yet, so I follow the marks and guide the hunters. Dead horses mark ourselves to commemorate our hunts. When a hunter takes a great beast, or when a youth goes on his first hunt, he gets a tattoo. 
We came up in the land of the dead horse. Though, why the back when folks called it that, I got no hint. We raided. We fought. We lost. Our enemies drove us back into Zion, and we would have died if it hadn't been for Joshua. Joshua and his Kaisar. When Joshua first came to us, he was servant to a man he called Kaisar. He led his master's armies, and we were ready to follow him into war. Then he lost his master's army to a tribe called Ensiar, the Sunset People. When he returned, he was as you saw him, burned, broken, but changed. He led us yet. away okay. from Kaisar, led us to our own destiny in Zion. If it wasn't for Joshua, the dead horses would still be the whipping boys of the Zion Valley. He taught us how to hold our territory, to protect ourselves. He guided us away from Kaisar and showed us how Kaisar would have destroyed us. Little bit. I met some of their missionaries a few times, but I'd never been to their city. Joshua could tell you more. Or Daniel, I imagine. We decorate our clubs with them to honor Joshua Graham. They were the weapons of his old tribe, so now they are ours. Can't say they seem that dangerous to me. But Joshua says they won the West. Only a little. I was very young. He was different. Prouder, yes, but harder, crueler, more driven. Really, I was terrified of him. We all were. When he came back, I almost didn't believe he was the same man. He was humbler. He wanted to protect, not destroy. Well, because they're our enemies. What else would we do? They take our land, they kill our scouts, they poach our hunting grounds. He's been the chief of our tribe since he came back to the valley. He went off to the civilized world years ago to fight a war. You see his face. I don't know. He doesn't talk about it much. Maybe. But how can two civilized tribes fight over something as small as a dam? <laughs> really? That's... my gods. Must be some mighty civilized folks who built that. <laughs> now you sound like Joshua. He always tells me that tribal life is better, that I should stay here and forget the outside world. Well then, let's get to trading. Well then, let's get to... Well then. Hmm. Didn't know I could have more armor. <laughs> maybe I will. Uh, maybe not. I'll be fine with this default stuff. Unless I can have more white leg, white leg stuff. <laughs> It'd be kind of funny.
Hold up. See that log over there? Take a closer look. There might be some good stuff tucked in there. What can I tell you? We follow this path for a while. Nice view of the river. Eh. Please. was some kind of lucky. Guess that one was all full of gecko, eh? <laughs> Don't get used to it, though. Yaogwai are plenty mean as a rule. You can take the path north here if you want, or head east over the ridge. There's a nice view from the top of that cliff, if you want a look. Like the shadow of a ghost. Headed north around this rock pile. That's right, lunch. Oh, I didn't see someone even chatted in the thing. Shit. <laughs> Should be looking at that more often.
Hold up. You're getting all turned around. Check your map and backtrack a little. All right, I'll go that way then. See the dead sentry? I think I'll save here. I think it's a good point to save. save here. I'll see y'all later.